people of YouTube, lend me your energy for episode six of Wonder Bathos begins now. I am your host, Optometron, with my guest tonight, Niku Senpai. He is my brother and Mario Maker. We've been friends for a while. Uh, absolutely amazing human being. Loves Mario Maker and platformers. Loves anime. Loves awesome video games. We played some Donkey Kong earlier tonight, and it was a tremendously fun time. I am excited to nerd out this episode, and it starts right now. Niku, let's go. Would you like? <laughs> Thank you for being here tonight. Would you like to introduce yourself to everybody? Yo, yeah. Um, thank you for having me. I'm Niku. Um, I normally would stream a lot of uh, Mario Maker. You know, we got our Silent Hill, Resident Evil love, and um, yeah, that's that's. I think that's my my intro. Like, I have honestly, not yeah. seen you play any Resident Evil or Silent Hill, and I feel like I'm what? severely, I'm severely missing out. I haven't seen you play any of that stuff. I need to come back. Usually, I see you play Mario Maker a lot, and then I've seen you play, um, I've seen you play some of the Yakuza stuff, which you got me hooked into. Really, really, am excited to go so through the good. Yakuza series. Sorry. I'm gonna have you break it down for me tonight. Um, for sure. But first, to start out the podcast, I do have to ask you some basic introductory questions we have to answer some burning questions here right now uh, very niku burning. senpai where did your name come from what is the origin behind it and what does it mean so niku is nick google translated <laughs> oh okay well yeah. that that be it's still very cool but now you've just doxed yourself to youtube uh. <laughs> no, no, but like, like I'll, I'll definitely tell everyone when they ask me, like, oh yeah, you know, um, what does Niku mean? Because Niku with one K just means meat. Really? Like, yeah, like just meat, like you know, what, just eating meat, or you know. How how cool would it be if your name was Meat Senpai? So that's why. <laughs> <laughs> that's why um, some people in chats will actually be like. Yo, hey meats or hey meat senpai, and then you know before it was a uh, you know meat hentai. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, you did tell yeah. me that earlier that your name used to be hentai. That I think that's amazing. We should we should talk about that. How long <laughs> did you go by hentai for on Twitch before it got removed? I'm gonna say two years. Two years. That's insane. That's awesome, though, that it took them two years to catch on. <laughs> well, that's why I didn't know that there was actually like a problem with it because there were other content creators that also went by hentai. So I was all like, Meh. you know, if, if a partner could get away with this. Do you think, they, think like, I... they they singled you out? Do you think that's what it was? They they let some partners get away with it, but then they were like, oh, no, this guy, we got to we got to make him change his name. So I'm going to say no. I'm going to say they started targeting the weebs. Oh, I have noticed. I've noticed that some people have like butt emotes and, mm -hmm. and because they're partners or because they bring in so much revenue to Twitch, they get left alone. And then other, I've seen other smaller creators have butt emotes that immediately mm -hmm. get TOS. And I just yeah. think that's it's unbalanced and kind of unfair. And it's like, it's a butt, you know, it's not, you're not, you don't have porn as an emote, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just a cartoon butt. It should be fine. Oh man, I can't control myself around all these animated butts. That was a thing. That was a thing one time. Some dude tried to see Twitch because he said he couldn't stop uh, for, you could, I'm going to say pleasuring himself because... I don't know. I didn't want to start the episode with saying, oh, yeah, this dude was jerking off to Twitch too much. But so he's, he's, he's pleasuring himself and he tried to sue Twitch because uh, the, the content was too hot. And it's like, well, like you kind of I don't know. It's ridiculous. You should just not watch then, I guess. If it's just too, too much for you to handle. You just shouldn't watch. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, too so that, much pleasure. Yeah, too much pleasure. It was a thing for a while. Uh, going going back to your name though, I meant to say this earlier. I I love the Japanese language because sometimes there are words that that sound very Japanese, and then you hear what they mean, and then you're like, oh wait, that sounds that sounds exactly like what it should sound like. So the fact that you said Niku Senpai Nick, 
That sounds exactly yeah. what it should be. <laughs> and then there's like uh, the one that came to mind was uh, Ch- Ch- Chizu Chizu Keki, and then it means cheesecake. It's cheesecake oh, in yeah, Japanese. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. but it's Chizu Keki. But the first time you hear it, you're like, wow, that sounds. That sounds exotic and like I don't I don't know what that means and then you hear cheesecake and you're like oh that sounds exactly what it should sound like yeah and because just, some words my bad um are actually you know I guess Americanized over to there so oh like, yeah I guess you're right yeah yeah so that's why it'll sound like it'll be like cheesecake but with a Japanese accent huh that is mm-hmm. fascinating I love that it's yeah, did I, you pick that up playing the the Yakuza games. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty sure they do say cheesy keku in in the yakuza game. <laughs> nice, nice. You're gonna school me right now on the on the, and for everybody listening at home because you have told me to play the yakuza games. I feel like I really need to play the yakuza games and I want to play them, but I'm very scared because there's so many of them and I don't know what order to play them in. So break it down for me. Lolopto, you're gonna get even more scared after this. Oh God! <laughs> please, please so, scare me. <laughs> so pretty much, um, Yakuza Zero, like you mentioned earlier, yeah, it is the origins uh, where you play as two of like the most uh, the main characters. Basically, you play as Kiryu, who's like the main character throughout the entire games, and okay. uh, it's when he's first starting off, being you know. For his age, I believe he's like 19 in the game. For his age, he's like super crazy mature and honest. But he wants to pretty much become this a a Yakuza, but make his own version of a Yakuza. Okay. Um, And so now is he that age throughout the whole games or just in the the origin Mm -hmm. one? Okay. Yeah, so every game... Yeah, every game from start to finish... uh, there's no really like a uh, time skip that I know of. Um, they okay. usually stay the same age and um, some games take two, two years, like, like a two year break. Okay. Like I think, and then Yakuza zero taking place in 1985, 86. Oh, wow. Um, so it, it's like kind of a period piece that takes place in the eighties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they definitely go very into detail, like on how things are like in Yakuza zero, you could make like millions and billions, like nothing because that was the bubble era back in Japan. Okay. And then after the bubble era, things started to go more downhill and you could, you can't pretty much make as much money as you would in Yakuza zero in like, let's say Yakuza three or afterwards. <laughs> That's really crazy how that like they follow the history like of of Japan and kind of the economy and stuff during the games. I think that's that's fascinating. I love the little details that they put into games. That is amazing. The only thing I knew about Yakuza before you saw because I, I, I saw a video on it. Apparently, there's a naked dancing dude that from Mr. real Luda. life. Yeah, that they put <laughs> into the game because they just loved him so much from his audition. <laughs> He like auditioned for it, and it's just a dude in his underwear, and he does this crazy dance. And so, is he in all of the games as well? He's in Yakuza Zero Origin. <laughs> He's just in the Zero one. Well, from what I've seen, um, so he mostly hangs out with uh, Majima, which is one of the main characters from Zero. You focus on Kiryu and Majima. You get to see two different sides of of um. Actually, you get to see many sides of of both of them because they have those wacky sub stories. And in Majima's main story, you actually run into Mr. Libido when he's trying to do something serious. So it's so it completely catches you off guard, right? I just realized that you said Libido. His name is Mr. Libido. Yeah. But they pronounce it Libido. Yeah. That's amazing. So, so you know what it means, though, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Libido is like sex drive, so it makes sense. Yeah, he's yeah. a naked dude that dances. That that's amazing. <laughs> that's hilarious. And so it's, zero zero is the first entry. Now, did it come out first, or is it just like the prequel origin story? Um. So from what I know, Yakuza, like just titled Yakuza, came out in PlayStation Two era. Okay. And I think. Uh, the second game did as well, and Yakuza Three, I think, came out on PlayStation Three and onward. Okay. Oh, yeah, because Yakuza Zero was made. I'm gonna say a few years ago. 
and honestly so so freaking great honestly is it i worth want playing is it worth playing that one first as the game mm-hmm. and then and then going into the main entry of the series to get the origin story first before seeing where the characters go yeah i'd say so because um it's like without giving away too much people say that that's probably their favorite majima okay. you get to for sure um like experience some things like i don't want to spoil it because honestly it's an awesome journey okay yeah definitely don't spoil it because I, I still want to play it too if i'm asking questions that are spoily just be like no i can't answer that and we'll, we'll move on to a different question <laughs> for sure it's like you know because i've that's probably one of my favorite games to watch people uh play through like um i have a friend uh goes by lighthouse victory who i love watching play uh yakuza just because I would, like, in my mind, I'm so invested in the story, right? Right. And I'm like, wow, this is really going on right now. What, what are they going to do? And he'll start questioning it. He'll be like, really, Kiryu? You're really going to be like this, you know, like, like oh, oh, all of a sudden you're going to take the moral high ground? Like, okay. and I'll be like, that's not at all what I was thinking about. I was so focused on the story. But no, you're going to be like... Kitty, what, what, what the hell's going on with you? This, this doesn't make sense. He'll actually right. start questioning things. <laughs> but I do love watching uh, people play Yakuza and for sure seeing their different takes on things and, and seeing it. So if you stream it, Opto, please. I, I, I can tell you right now that I will always take the high road first. I, I cannot force myself to do a bad playthrough and be like the like be a villain. Like Infamous did that to me. I played through the first couple of infamous games and it's like, you can either be a good guy and like save people and save civilians and stuff. And like, not and like there's bars. Cause if you do a bunch of good stuff, you get like different powers for being a good, a good character. And then you get like different powers for being like a bad character and like killing civilians and stuff and doing that second playthrough, trying to play as the villain was so hard for me. Like I, I just, I just couldn't do it, you know? And so I, I definitely am the same way and watching people play games too. Like uh, one of my favorite games to watch people play through is like the dark souls series, especially mm. the first one watching somebody play it for the first time. I'm just like, Oh, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? <laughs> you know? And so I, I definitely feel that. And uh, I am excited uh, to play Yakuza for the first time. And, uh, and I hope that you're able to make it and, and be there to be my, uh, my guide and my Sherpa through the first game i think that would be a lot of fun we need to play some mario maker again soon too oh, I, yeah. I, I was i was excited to think maybe we might get to play some co-op tonight but we had too much fun with the the donkey kong man that that was a lot of fun playing donkey kong tonight i feel like people like are either really really good at that game <laughs> Or Donkey forget Kong? that it's hard. Oh. Yeah, so because some people will be like, "Oh, I I beat this game as a kid. I can't believe you guys are struggling." <laughs> oh man, it's like, dude, every game is. There was something we played the other day that was like a game for for kids and supposedly super easy, and it's just I don't know. <laughs> not having played it for a while also i feel like my skills are diminishing like even pl- i picked up mario maker the other day and like i was struggling on some of the super expert popular levels which i know that that's a mixed bag sometimes you do get super hard levels but i feel like they were levels i should have gotten through pretty easily and i was like i my fingers just don't know how to work anymore and so not like, compute yeah yeah and so donkey kong <laughs> if you haven't played it in 15 years or 20 years or however long yeah it could be kind of hard you know <laughs> For sure, but there, I, I know there is that like huge group of people who solely stick to retro games. Yeah, and I feel like games that you know tend to come out during that same era, I guess. Right. Kind of ish, give you that same play vibe. Like, like let's say you know, it, it's not like if I play Donkey Kong, I'm gonna be able to compare it to like, uh, what's another platformer? What was that? A uh, Jump King? Oh, Jump you King. Know, yeah. Like, yeah, so it's going to be like definitely very just a different feel. They may look the same. I I think Donkey Kong looks better. <laughs> yeah, but... right, absolutely. I don't know. The, some games jams. from some of those retro games play like butter, though. Like I I feel like Donkey Kong is a lot smoother than like if you were to try and play like Castlevania today, like or what whichever was the Super Nintendo Castlevania that came out, or like or like Metroid. 
Um, but then there are other games like Star Fox is another good example. That game, even the regular Star Fox and Super Nintendo just plays like butter. It's so smooth and like just the motion feels so um, like comfortable and like fluid. And then you have games that are just like super wonky and awkward. <laughs> um, Donkey Kong definitely has its moments. Like when you couldn't jump on that platform, like Dude. You, you were <laughs> over top of it and you just kept falling right through it. That hitbox, man, it, I, they do that on purpose. <laughs> but at least it was intentional and not just like an after effect. You know, somebody from modern time today going back, playing a retro game and being like, oh, God, this game sucks, you know, because I can't figure out how to do anything. For sure. Like, like, remember how when we were trying to toss the tire down below to see if it's possible to get soft locked? Yes. Yes. <laughs> So, they, you were right. They really did think of everything. <laughs> they, they, I think a lot games back then they had a lot more time to put into play testing and stuff. Where like these newer games coming out, they're just crunching. As there's these giant worlds that they're crunching so hard to get put out by a deadline that they they don't actually give it the play testing and love. I haven't played the new Pokemon game, but I've seen a lot of people complaining about it on Twitter and I've seen video clips of like the characters doing all sorts of crazy stuff and like their arms yeah. and legs flying everywhere. And it's like what is going on Nintendo? I can't believe you would put out a game that's this broken. It blows my mind. It's I truly it's very like insane. Like I know the story I feel like the story with this game is kind of like one P like early one piece fans where it's all like, you know, the graphics are messing up and then people are just like, Oh, the animation of one piece is like horrible. I think the, the animation in one piece now is amazing. Oh my, it's so it, good. It's, you can mm -hmm. tell how much heart goes into it now, especially for certain episodes. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, are we are like, we treading just... are we treading into anime territory now? Is that what's happening? Probably you caught the transition. No, I'm yeah, kidding. I, did. I, <laughs> I, I was just I, like, I, I tend to think like in like different areas sometimes. And uh it, like it's it's a really weird thing. Like sometimes let's say like when I'm sad, um to diminish that or like to not be in that zone for too much, I'll remember one word that'll take me to a different memory of when I'm happy. So I won't be stuck in that area for too long. I don't know if that's, it's a thing. Like, it's a, I looked this up recently. It's called uh it's called a memory palace. And memory it's, palace. It, yeah. It's there's some dude who was able to memorize this. is How I knew about it. Cause they were talking about this guy has the best memory in the world. He's like in the Guinness book of world records. He remembered the order of like 42, different decks of cards now every deck of cards is like 52 cards he remembered the order of every deck and they were all different and he remembered them sequentially uh using memory palace and apparently like the way a memory palace works is you imagine a room you imagine a room you're very familiar with so usually it's like a room in your home something you're comfortable with and then you imagine your you close your eyes and you imagine yourself walking through the room and picturing everything in the room the way you remember it right so like any objects like plants or pictures or anything that are on tables or like anything hanging up on the walls or anything on shelves you remember exactly what's in there and then you walk through the room and as you walk through the room in your mind you pick an object and you um you give that object like a second meaning. So like for the cards, uh, just for example, me, my guitar is usually right here next to my desk. So in my memory palace, I would be like, all right, well, the guitar is going to be the first card and the first card is going to be the two of hearts. And then once you do that in your memory palace, it helps you remember, like it just gives you objects that you, I'm, I can't think of the word, but you know what I mean? Like, so the guitar oh, becomes yeah, the yeah. two of hearts. So like in my memory palace, as I build it up, like every object is going to have a card that's tied to it. And then I remember the order and then you just sit there and practice the order in your head to where you can remember it. And uh, it's really cool, man. That's I cannot insane. believe that somebody can memorize that many decks of cards back, yeah, back and forth. That, that's what I mean. Like remembering that, like, like I could, I could totally picture exactly like how you describe the, the memory palace. But doing that for how many deck of cards? You said 40 something? Yeah, it was like, I can't remember the exact number, but yeah, it was like 40 decks of cards. This <laughs> dude remembered in order and got it perfectly. And he's in like the Guinness Book of World Records for having the best memory on the planet. 
and he and his, the first and he's not cocky about it either he's like anybody can do this you just have to keep building memory palaces so he builds like uh, i guess i don't know if he uses the same room i guess he uses like different rooms you know so he imagined 40 different rooms and then each room was a different deck of cards and was able to memorize all the cards that way and i think that's insane totally yeah, like so you're talking about but you use it with emotion so like you feel like you're yeah. stuck in a video game and you're you're like having a bad time so you like you bring up something happy that kind of gives you the energy to like get through get through the rough part and i think that's awesome i want to start doing that you yeah, inspired so, me <laughs> awesome yeah i'd say like if you're ever having a bad day well then again you know sometimes i do feel like people need to have those sad times to truly like you know appreciate the better times that much harder you know 100%. like we suffer like we suffer sometimes and that turns into being a like like you'll you'll be happy as as fuck during one point and you'll be like bro i'm, I'm so glad that i'm at this point now and yeah. not how i was at the start of the day like this morning sucked but you know we pushed through it and you know sometimes we do learn from it Sometimes you do learn oh, yeah. from it. You know, it oh, can't yeah. be happy times all the times. I feel like happy times all the times would make us not appreciate happy times as much. You're, you're bringing up like some matrix ideology. Cause like, I, <laughs> well, I mean, I talk about this all, not to get into like conspiracy theories and weird shit. I feel like we haven't hit that point in the episode yet, but my theory on there's, there's conspiracies about us living in a simulation. And like my argument against that is like, if it if it's a simulation and it's coded and it doesn't really take any res extra resources, why does everybody have to suffer and have like bad times? And I think one, it makes it more believable, and two, like it really makes you appreciate like the good stuff that you do have in life. And uh, even taking that a step further, like we, I personally have had a really rough couple of years. The last two years have been awful, and it just seems like one struggle after another after another. And then when we finally got to a point, like. My wife had just started a, a, a good brand new job. I had just gotten my my job as a graphic designer and like things were good again. And it was like instead of the main goal being to survive, like things slowed down to a stop. And it was like now it's time to start enjoying like the good stuff. And in just one solid wave, we started reflecting like we finally had a chance to sit down and like, holy shit, I can't believe we went through all that. And it all just kind of hit at once. And it was like a really tough like week or two getting used to like this new lifestyle. But I think you're absolutely right. Like all those bad times definitely make you appreciate the good times. The universe has a very sick sense of humor sometimes, but it's been around a lot longer than we have, you know? So like, I feel like it has a plan. <laughs> it has a plan. It knows what it's doing. Imagine in the end, it's just like, you know, for whatever reason, it's just like part of a selfish machine that is fueled by, torture and then we're just it, it's like you know what fine fine you've made me happy here you go be happy for like a few months and then, right. and then check check back in with me after your your 30 lunch 30 minute lunch break because <laughs> you, know, you gotta be sad again <laughs> i, I put out joke. a tweet i put out a tweet this morning uh somebody sent me an, an an astronomy thing that's like oh if you're a taurus or an aries uh you've probably had a really rough couple of years well guess what 2023 is going to be your year it's going to be <laughs> awesome Awesome for and I'm just like fuck yeah, dude. That's what I want to hear. This is gonna be my. It's already started off really good, and I feel like it's just going to better places. Like this year is gonna be awesome, you know. And I feel this like this is your year, Opta. It is my year, and I feel like I've, <laughs> I've suffered a lot, and I've I've been through the trenches, and now like it's time to get to the good stuff. And we've we've worked really hard to get here, and now it's time to like start actually enjoying the benefits you know we get we get a chance to stop and actually smell the roses and i think that's awesome and i hope that everybody gets gets that you know everybody gets to a point where they can they can enjoy that and do that you know? and then um, totally and again i know i know uh we've talked a little bit about this stuff you know off podcast um but again dude ggs you know to you the fam for pulling through i know thank you. tough times thank are you. like what like so they're just like what is this really happening exactly but, it's but so now, surreal <laughs> now it's turning around to is this really happening in a positive way and i'm so yes. happy for for all of you so thank congrats you, again thank you i really appreciate yeah. that i'm i Good. i'm excited to be able to do this uh in this capacity because like the idea for the podcast was like 
I we've been so shut off from like our friends and stuff for such a long time because we've been worried about surviving and stuff that like this is important to me because we always say like oh man I want to hang out with this person soon or like I haven't seen this person in forever and it never seems like there's enough time in the day and like the idea behind the podcast was like I'm gonna make time I'm gonna make time for my friends I'm gonna make time for the people I care about and like make time to be able to hang out with them and, and and do stuff with them in like a more intimate setting that isn't like, Hey, we're playing among us on Friday. Let's get 15 people together, which is really fun. It is really fun, but it's so chaotic and you don't really get to take in and appreciate like the time that you're spending with them like this, like hanging out with you right now and everybody I've had on the podcast so far and everybody that's uh, booked all the way through april like april is april done. yeah i've started oh. for may now and it blows my mind that because i didn't think i was going to be able to book a whole month you know it's hard to schedule people and to get people down but everybody's been so supportive of it and like i i just love this you know like niku every time i see your name i'm like man i want to hang out with niku again i want to hang out with niku and like it just never seems like there's enough time or like trying to schedule and get things going so like this this time is important to me and it's about lifting up my friends and like that's kind of what the podcast is all about so again thank you for being here and being a part of it no yeah it means, totally it means a lot for, to me <laughs> and then and likewise you know because you're right i feel like we're kind of that like Let's say I guess we're we're both on Twitch, right? We're coworkers. Right. <laughs> we're kind of yeah. We both like, work for Papa Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> we're like we pass each other on the hallway, and you know we're always like you know we'll wish each other luck, or you know yeah. we'll hope that things are always running smooth. But we, you're right, we don't ever really get to like hang out like this and be like, okay, let's talk about you know being happy instead and and angry orgies. And angry um, orgies, yes. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> those things just mesh so well, you know. <laughs> and and which big boobed wifey shirt to wear? Which one exactly. are you wearing? Yeah, what, what what are you wearing today, Niku? Currently, oh, can I even? Show yeah, this? sure. It's YouTube. I mean, like it, it'll be fine, right? Yeah, it's totally fine. Like, that's oh, that's yeah. not against YouTube TOS. That's fine. <laughs> Those are some giant mommy milkers, by the way. Oh, Those are yeah. massive. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yo, I need this. I have, um, well, you know, there are these cups. Yeah, but <laughs> and then um, I do have another cup of this, sh this actual shirt um, sealed away. Um, but yeah, no, like I have actually have three of those cups on me from like uh, G Sups. That's awesome. <laughs> You know, you gotta have. So now, are you just are you very supportive and love the brand? Or are you sponsored by them? I am not sponsored by them. I'd love to be. You should be. You should be. If you're right? listening, if you're listening, G G subs. If yeah. you if you find yourself in the Wonder Bathos area, you should definitely sponsor Niku Senpai. <laughs> that that would be awesome. I love honestly, that beanie too. By the way, that beanie. It's is also G subs. <laughs> yeah, that beanie is badass. Thank you. This man is giving you so much money. Sponsor him. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, like uh, I was talking to some of the coworkers too, just because I was like, I don't mean this to like be like, hey, you have to try this, but you know, sometimes people will work like doubles, and I'll be like, yo, if you want some, you know, some really good energy, try some G subs, and I'll be like, I'm down, and it trips me out because I'm not really like big on like caffeine and stuff like that, but I really right. do love the flavor. So I'll put like half a scoop sometimes and I'll be set for a while. But other people are like, nah, bro, I need to have a crazy amount of servings. But it's because they're like, you have no idea how much coffee I drink on, on the regular. So this is, this helps like a lot. <laughs> And then yeah. th this will be some people who are like, I ask for like, I don't know how many shots of espresso. And I'm all like, that's, that's, that's a lot. Something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, my, my oldest brother is the wildest shit. I've seen him just order literally nothing else. It's not mixed with anything. Just six so shots of espresso and a cup full of ice and just sit there and drink. Like no flavoring, no nothing, no coffee around it. Just six straight shots of espresso, and Ooh. and I'm like, I cannot believe you're putting that in your body right now. That is so much caffeine. Like one or two shots, and I'm like bouncing off the walls, man. And mm -hmm. I and I take a lot of, I used to take a lot of caffeine, trying to cut that out. Um, 
but yeah, dude, espresso, uh, it's nothing to be trifled with. It will sneak up on you. So hearing that there are some actual good supplements that have like a, a decent amount of caffeine in it that don't give you, that doesn't make you jittery and stuff. I'm all about that. Cause I do not like the jitters at all. <laughs> and sugar free and sugar free. See, he's not even <laughs> I know sponsored. You... Listen to yeah, him. Right? <laughs> and it's sugar free and it's um, eco-friendly. It's, it saves right? the bees. It saves the bees. It, uh, you know, <laughs> plants trees. <laughs> it picks up litter out of the ocean. Exactly. <laughs> it'll, ru it'll rub your back when you're having a bad day. G subs knows what's up. <laughs> it <will. laughs> oh, but, um, man, that's so good. All right. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm getting kind of, I'm getting kind of anxious here. I'm ready to, uh, I'm ready to open, open the anime floodgates. So you mentioned oh. one, one piece earlier. Are you current? Yeah. So one piece, I don't typically like, I'm not like on it. I still okay, watch so it on. on uh, yeah. I watch it on tsunami. Okay. That's right. They brought um, tsunami back. Yeah. I totally forgot about that. I love that they brought tsunami back for sure i remember so watching I'll... tsunami with like big o and stuff sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you but <laughs> no, i had to no, get the no, big o yeah, yeah you're right though. Yeah. <laughs> for sure no for sure for sure um yeah they brought tsunami back and you know we were talking about uh outlaw earlier uh, so i that, cannot that believe was... they showed the hot springs episode on tsunami that blows my mind Mm -hmm. That was like, because I remember when I bought the box set, the the bootleg, the really nice, really nice bootleg <laughs> box set. Uh, that was like, I saw that episode for the first time because I had seen the series on Toonami, like pretty much from start to finish. And I was like, I've never seen this episode before. And then like I started looking it up and like found out that it was banned or like they didn't want to censor it. They just they just didn't show that episode at all. And then yeah. to find out that later on now they've played it on Toonami. I'm like, I cannot... What is the world coming to? I cannot believe that they would show that, and it's amazing. But I love that story. I love Outlaw Star. Uh, we talked about Cowboy Bebop a little bit. So what what are you currently watching? What's your what's your main right now? Uh, well, I just finished JoJo. Um, uh, I got feelings about JoJo. Somebody somebody said earlier the Steel Ball Run the next the next entry is everybody's favorite now, and I'm like I cannot I can't believe it until i see it i can't well, believe it I, until i see it try out the manga but yeah I, I feel like i'm on the same boat like it's gonna be different but it is gonna be different i do i heard there's a lot of callbacks and cameos to to previous seasons and uh so i am excited i am excited about that uh, I know to, a couple of them. I, re I read a little bit about it because I was curious what was going to happen after Stone Ocean. But uh, yeah, dude. To make I feel a little happy. Uh, it's. <laughs> oh, can't wait to be up on Blu ray. Yeah. Sorry about that. I was just like, I, I like when we talked about it a little earlier, I was like, I really want to show him. And I, I'm like, this has to be the perfect time to show him. I love that so much. I, I'm not going to do it right now because I don't want to derail the episode. But afterwards, I'm going to send you a picture of my anime Blu-ray collection because it's it's not it's not very big, but it's pretty impressive. I got some good stuff in there. You're going to be like, oh, I can't believe I remember that's a show. Because <laughs> I started yeah. collecting early on. You were the original weeb? <laughs> Uh, kind of, sorta, man. I know we mentioned uh, we mentioned pink pineapple earlier because uh, for the memes we mentioned the pink pineapple earlier. But uh, the first anime, the first like couple animes I ever saw were like a couple of, like the the eighties cult classics. So I mean, like little kid, like probably late nineties. Uh, the first animes that I were introduced to were Akira, of course, which is a cult course. classic. That's like the anime if you say anime to like old school anime nerds. Akira was the the old school one, but what really got me into anime was this anime called uh, Devil Devil Hunter Yoko, and uh, it was another like late eighties, early nineties anime, and it was like one of ADV films. Do you remember ADV films? They did like Bubblegum Crisis, uh, like Wicked City. I think they may have had something to do with like Vampire Hunter D. Uh, a lot of like those old like eighties animes and stuff. 
But no. Devil Hunter Yoko was about this this high school girl that was like a demon hunter and her family was a demon hunter for like so many generations uh but there was like a lot of like that like toilet humor in there where like her grandma is like oh if you're gonna go out meet boys you take these and she like throws her condoms and stuff and, like, yeah so like border it was kind of etchy it was like a little bit etchy like kind of risque uh but not not nearly as bad as what some of like the PG thirteen animes are these days. Like back then, it was raunchy, but it is not raunchy at all uh, compared, compared to today's. Yeah, compared to today's like high standards. school DXD. Yeah, high school DXD yeah. is bad compared to that. Wait, which um, I love high school DXD. <laughs> huh? I love um, high school DXD. So so like, do I. I I have a Rius uh figurine in my closet. Me and my wife went through like a phase where we started buying like the anime figurines and stuff because we would go to conventions yeah. every weekend and there were some really cool figures out there. Dope. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually moved my Rius blanket a little earlier just so just, oh, just so we can see it. <laughs> you should have. You should have. <laughs> It's cool. I don't. I don't hide who I am. I'm proudly a weeb. I don't get a chance to talk about it much on on uh, like Twitch and stuff, just because my community my community is not really a bunch of anime weebs. I need to hang out in your community more so I can talk more anime because I love this. This is like this feels so good. Oh, <laughs> to be oh able yeah, to get it out. my community is filled with like just a bunch of degens. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah. You're set. well, not even degens, <laughs> just people that appreciate and love anime. You know, oh, like, cultured. <laughs> yeah culture there you go there you go that's that's the perfect terminology for it i mean we could be dgens too but like i mean we can talk like i love talking about like inuyasha and stuff too like so what's the longest series that you've watched jojo <laughs> really so you um, haven't gotten into like naruto one piece uh or what's the other so one bleach so yeah i would watch naruto oh remember earlier how i was like and then the e <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> so i i love the original naruto and then i feel like shippuden just couldn't do it for me um, same same but for different reasons <laughs> Ooh, what are these reasons uh i got pissed off at the show i got really into naruto and i think me and my wife but we watched naruto separately like before we met and then uh, about the time we got together, we tried to jump into Shippuden. And uh, I like how country I said that. Shippuden. Um, Shippuden. <laughs> 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 but so it had been, it was like four or five episodes into Shippuden. And it had been 90 episodes since we had seen anything from Sasuke. And like that was my drive to keep watching the show. Like after Sasuke disappeared, because like I knew he came back at some point and like was a key player in the show. But after 90 episodes of him not being around, I was so, fr I was like, that's all I want to see. And I'm not going to keep watching this. So like I, I rage quit. I rage quit Shippuden. Cause I was, I was like tired of waiting for Sasuke to come back. And, uh, and that was like what I wanted to see. I wanted to see their like rivalry, like continue to grow and like what happened to him while he was away and, and all that stuff. And I know that it gets really good, but it's been really hard for me to go back and like give it another shot. So I, I'm like 300 and I think it's 351 episodes or something. Same as Dragon Ball, which is weird. Dragon Ball Z. Uh, oh right, the uh, longest one the uh, was probably Dragon Ball. You're yeah, right, yeah. Dra Dragon Ball Z had about 350 episodes, so watched through all of Naruto and then Shippuden started, and about four episodes in, I was just like, I can't do this anymore. I was like, I got to go watch something else, and it's just been hard <laughs> trying to get back on it. And now Boruto's out; like they've already ended that series and started a whole another series. And uh I'm try trying trying to do, go back to it. Do what? If they do a Dragon Ball Z Kai for Naruto Shippuden, I think it could work. That would be amazing. That would be what I need to go back and watch. See, I haven't watched Kai either. I have I have all of the Blu-rays for Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Z Kai. And every time I want to start watching the show, I want to watch through the original with the filler again and then start Kai. But I, I started watching it with my son, and I think we're just now at the Frieza battle and dragon Ooh. ball z which is, which is only like the second or third blu-ray <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and and we just haven't continued it on from there but at some point i am going to go back and watch kai because they read it all the voice acting for it too and i think that's the thing i want the most it's really good 
I, I just um, love the animation from the original though too. Like, yeah. Cause it has that kind of like grainy, like early nineties, like feel and aesthetic to it. And it just hits home. It's like way more nostalgic. Yeah. That's what I was talking about a little bit ago. Like on, um, I think I tweeted it. Like I'm going to say a few weeks ago where I was like, I feel like there's just something about the nineties aesthetics, like an anime, like that, that we just don't have anymore but are so good yeah like you could watch some of these and just relax on a nice rainy day yeah exactly yeah that's why that's why super that's why dragon ball super is big as big of a budget as it's got as pretty as it is is all the all the time and heart that's gone into it it's good it's really good and it has familiar characters but it's a totally different show and, and sure. it just doesn't have the same feel and it doesn't hit as hard as dragon ball z one piece is a good example though because it never stopped and you watch it evolve as it goes and like now they have the budget and are doing the same like big episodes with the same big budget and all the uh, the awesome effects and the awesome fight scenes and stuff but it still holds up like they did a really good job of like moving into a modern age without losing the aesthetic of like the older episodes yeah, because th that's actually funny. Um, because my girlfriend loves One Piece and she hates JoJo because of the animation. What? Who yeah. hates JoJo? <laughs> Who hates JoJo? The hardest, the hardest part of that show to get through is like the first six episodes of the first season. Because oh, the first part, yeah it's nothing like the rest of the series like it, it's more of like go a through horror. it yeah yeah it's yeah. like a horror like an 80s got like a gothic style horror anime for the first six episodes which i love by the way i love that but it, it totally stands apart from like the next six seasons for sure uh, i was gonna say and then it's the opposite for me because i love jojo and you know i always try to see piece? I don't hate One Piece. Okay, it's okay if you do. You're allowed to have. You're allowed to have opinions. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, um, so I don't watch it. Like I'll catch it if it's on tsunami or if I'm like hanging out with her and it's like tsunami night. Then I'll be like, oh hey, look, babe, it's on. But um, I was all like, how are you gonna judge JoJo's art style and be completely fine with One Piece's art style? Like how it was back then, because right. she because she did mention how like you get to see the passion behind I forgot his name the the uh, creator Oda? it's Oda Oda you get to see the you know the motion and everything as it happens and then you're right you know you did you do get to see the evolution behind all the animation from like where when it first started all the way up to now and I think now it looks beautiful yeah um, it does. Yeah, it does. I it's guess... definitely it would be hard to go back and watch the original episode. <laughs> it would it would be kind of hard. It would definitely be hard. I can't believe JoJo's has been out for like twenty five years. I did not know it was that old. Like it's been out for a long time. Yeah, like it's crazy to think some of these like longer running anime series. It makes me happy though, like because usually any sort of IP or media only like if it has a 10 year life, that is a very long time for any TV series, whether it be anime or uh, a, like t a regular TV show, that's a long time. And at that point they're usually like, how much more money can we squeeze out of this <laughs> <laughs> yeah. realistically before we have to pull the plug. And so seeing these things that go on for like 25 years or more. And I think uh, the longest running anime in, um, Japan is uh, Shin Shin Chan. I think has like three thousand episodes or something. Shin Chan is still going. Yeah, dude, it has like three thousand episodes. It's one of there. There's that anime. There's another anime that's kind of like a wacky, like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure style, like anime, not as intense. Uh, that's been going on for a long time. And then like Detective Conan is like number two or number three for like the longest running series. And I'm like, if I if I was watching for two two thousand episodes or however long it's been out and this little boy hasn't gotten his body back, I'd be so pissed. <laughs> I'd be like, dude, just give him his body back. <laughs> is that how you're feeling right now about Ash? Cause he's not gonna be the main pro tag anymore? Uh, I never really got into the Pokemon anime. The the original gotcha. series, like up I have a I have a tattered history with Pokemon. 
Mm. Like I, I was there when Pokemon first came out and I even used to go to Toys R Us and on the weekends and do like the tournaments and stuff and, and play. Oh, po- yeah, dude, it was awesome. And so Pokemon, when it first came out after the first 151 came out and like right after Pokemon, the movie came, so this would in the year 2000. Cause I think it came out in like the end of 99 or like, or right in the beginning of 2000, the first Pokemon movie came out. For a long time, there was no Pokemon news about anything new coming out. And so, like, I thought it was over. I thought Pokemon was dead. There wasn't going to be anything else about this. It was just gone. Like, we it had it run its, it had run its time. Um, and I had, like, almost two full sets of first edition original Pokemon cards that I sold at a garage sale for, like, 150 bucks. Whoa. So, like, two first edition hollow Charizards. 150 bucks and that was like one of the happiest days of my life because i was like 14 years old i was like i just made 150 bucks on some cardboard hell yeah <laughs> you know and i was i was so happy about it now that i'm an adult i was like i could have not had to do anything for the rest of my yeah. life yeah if I, if I had held on to that cardboard and uh I've, I've gotten over it i've made my peace with it so i'm not <laughs> i'm no, not no, like yeah. crying, crying myself to sleep over it but still like and even then, after that, after I had sold them, it was still like another two years before they released any new news about Pokemon or anything about a next gen coming out. There was nothing. It was ghostly quiet. And so when you're a kid, especially at the age of 14, two years is a long, long time. time, a long. That's like an eternity to wait on something new. And so like I, I sold my cards and I moved on to something. I think I got into star Wars about that point, like got over Pokemon, started getting into star Wars and like collecting all the figures and stuff. Yeah. And then Gundams. (laughs) And then I hit 16 or 17 and started thinking about girls and got rid of all my action figures. And even those, man, like I had all the original Gundam figures and like, ah, just, I don't have them anymore. And so like, I think as an adult now I have all these toys and collectibles and I'm like, I got it. These are sacred. Like I have to keep these nice, you know, like these are going to get passed down to my son when he's, when he's old enough. And then he's going to be like, why do I care about that? Yeah. Then he's going to be like, I'm going to take a BB gun out back and, and shoot shoot up and and firecracker all these, all these guns and stuff. I mean, it was fun. It was fun tying bottle rockets to a bunch of Gundams. That was a good time because they would just like fly up into the air and explode. So as, as like a 16, 17 year old, that was pretty fun. But I wish yeah, I hadn't yeah. done that. <laughs> I wish I wish I'll I had not done that. Um, I, uh, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say like I, I'm the entirely like the same way. Like I do have like some stuff that's like fairly new, like all the Yakuza games. Um, I do have some Inuyasha. Uh, what are those things called? The Nendroids. Oh, then the, um, yeah, the Nendroids. Yeah, I've got a Link one from Majora's Mask over there on the dope. shelf yeah i i love those things but damn dude they the arms do not stay on very well like <laughs> really? oh well actually i still have mines in their in their box oh oh okay yeah the only one that i don't is this one and it's it's i swear it's not because i'm perv but it could be oh is is that the is that the uh um, uzaki chan yeah 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 i know i know which one you're talking about <laughs> I swear it's not because I'm a pervert. That's what. As you're wearing that shirt, you're like, oh, it's not. It's not for the boobs, man. It's not for the it's boobs. Not, it's not connected. I swear. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I also do collect a lot of um. Well, not so much anymore, but I do want to get um. You know the purple atomic controller Nintendo sixty four. Yes. The, the box. I want to yes. get a complete in box one and just have it there for decoration yeah <laughs> but i i am that type like i have a whole thing just filled with 90s uh nintendo stuff and pokemon stuff just because i don't know it felt like you know we're not in that world anymore you know yeah we're not and, and i and it's you see these jerks like these big youtubers and stuff that will buy up a bunch of like game boy advances and then they'll like <laughs> put it into a resin cast <laughs> to make like a table and it's like oh my god that's a piece of history <laughs> that's yeah. just destroyed forever <laughs> you know and it's like yeah it looks cool but you know it'd be cooler not doing that not doing <laughs> that yeah. not destroying something you know because like 
I feel like places like Game Exchange and like GameStop, like they're they're getting outdated. They're not going to be around much longer. And like being able to find retro stuff is harder and harder. Thankfully, there are a bunch of companies that are making brand new stuff, and it's cool that you can buy like a game a similar to a Game Boy Advance that has like a 4K resolution screen on it and has like joysticks built into it. I think that's super cool, but it's not the same. It's not the Got same it. as having like an actual Game Boy Advance. Um, like sometimes we're we're just happy with what it was. Yeah, exactly. Like not well, not everything ages as well, but there are just some things like you can't go wrong with a Game Boy and you know, I, let's say I, Pokemon I, Red. I have a drawer right next to my desk for Sega stuff because so, uh, because I just I love I love Sega stuff. I have a, a Sega Game Gear that I've been holding on to, and when I bought it, like the 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 battery coils had a bunch of corrosion stuff on it, and I've cleaned this thing up, and it works. Uh, the only thing wrong with it is the speakers are kind of crackly, just because this thing is like old as almost as old as I yeah. am, if not older. <laughs> Can you and, connect headphones to it? Uh, let me see. Yes, it has it has a headphone jack right there. Ooh, problem solved. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't I don't Yeah, you know what? Actually yeah. that might that might solve the problem. Is it be a direct input and not yeah. <laughs> not coming to the speakers? I still want to get the speakers plugged no, up, yeah. but just having that Sega. Yeah, it's I love so it. great. It's so good, dude. Oh man. So what's your what's your favorite console then? She <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I know you're going to put me at this fun in the spot at some point, but I was like, she, um, honestly, the console I probably had the most fun with, uh, probably 64 or GameCube. Really? Yeah. A lot of, a lot of people say GameCube. And like, when I think back, I just think that GameCube didn't have the, the same library. It didn't have like a, a big library. Like most of the other consoles, like 64 had a ton of games for <laughs> it, you know? Um, what came after the GameCube? Was it the Dreamcast? Wii. It was the Wii? The Dreamcast was uh, before, was it like around the Nintendo 64? Oh, yeah. Dreamcast is a yeah. Sega game. It's a console, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sega Dreamcast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Say- sorry. I, I just had a brain fart right there. Was a Dreamcast. <laughs> I didn't own a Dreamcast. I didn't own it, uh, but I thought it was super cool because it, you know, it takes discs or whatever. And then, you know, the GameCube, the GameCube takes discs too. So I thought that was really cool. That Nintendo and Sega were still kind of like battling it out for, for disc yeah. consoles and stuff. Um, I definitely, I think 64 for me as well. I remember my mom worked at Blockbuster and I remember going in and seeing the display light up for like the little, the display inside that you could play games. And it always had like the wave race intro playing. And I just yeah. remember seeing the, the, the water and thinking, oh man, these graphics are so good. It's like, you're really out there in the ocean, man. And like, and then we look back at it now. <laughs> yeah. They're like, they're just triangle, right. blue triangles coming out of the water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but honestly, it's- those, those made us so happy. They did. Yeah. they did those memories cemented into us like one thing that i always go back to the memory that i go back to the most is i had a friend who lived down the street from my house and my older brother had a playstation but he would never let us play it like he was very stingy about it even when he was around like he wouldn't let us play it and like he was just a really big dick about it and uh my friend down the street had a playstation and so i would go spend the night at his house and we would play video games and he only had like three games he had like battle arena toshinden um like jet moto and then resident evil and Yo. I getting so scared playing Resident Evil. We gotta Evil. talk about Resident Evil in a bit, in a bit. Continue, but we, we gotta we talk can, about Resident Evil. Ta- we can talk about Resident Evil right now. That's where I was going, <laughs> dude. Where the scene where you're walking down the hallways and as soon as you turn around, the dogs jump through the windows. That is yeah. the scariest moment in video game history for me until Dead Space came out. And then Dead Space Ooh. came out, and that was the first game to recapture that feeling for me um since since the original resident evil came out but we would like turn off the lights and it would make it extra spooky yeah like one or two o'clock in the morning so it's super quiet and ambient in the room and then we would just start playing resident evil dude and it would scare the shit out of me i loved that thrill and that feeling of playing it it. so good it is so good so you want to talk resident evil no yeah because i was gonna say too like you know when i was a kid um my sister was actually a manager at a blockbuster so she nice. would always get me different types of games 
and you know she'd be like oh here like that's why or i gotta try out paper mario mm -hmm. um where i got smash brothers and i was like oh who's this character and it's ness which i've never seen before yeah which nobody <laughs> so, knew who was at the time yeah yeah so like it was always that and then um I know she never got me Resident Evil, but it's because I was, I was so scared to play anything horror when I was a kid. Like, I, I would leave the room because they were playing a horror movie, or right. because they were playing a horror game. But now, I freaking love it. I don't know if you've been around, but um, sometimes I'll like, I guess, casually speedrun uh, Outlast. Oh no, that's awesome though. That game, that, I love that game. I love Outlast. So much fun! I need Outlast. to. I want to watch one of your speed runs on that. Do you, do you have any? Uh, do you have a YouTube channel? Do you have stuff up on YouTube for speed run content or yeah. not? Not like really. Any, I any content? Um, I think so. Like I, I wanted to do the same thing and just upload vods. Oh. There is like one compilation video for like just a bunch of random like funny clips and right. there is old music stuff which i don't really talk about anymore because i don't really like play but there oh, is some stuff oh we're getting into the yeah. hot niku senpai lore i need to go check out some of this old music content oh man well yeah i was in a ska core band when i was younger and no then way I was... dude i love it so ska core was a lot of fun same I and then I not as much as punk, but you know, ska is upstrokes instead of downstrokes. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, um, that acoustic stuff. But we're we're moving off from Resident Evil. We we got to talk about Resident Evil. Let's talk. Who's about your Resident Evil. Evil waifu? Oh, my Resident Evil waifu. Uh, probably oh, Claire. It's got to be Claire. Claire. It's got to be she's, Claire. She's she's adorable. I will give you that. Jill Jill is definitely hotter. I will give. I will say that Jill is definitely hotter, but Claire's my waifu. Because um, my actually my favorite entry in the series is not the first Resident Evil. It's uh, Code Veronica. Oh, yeah. I just From what I've heard too, that's like the hardest Resident Evil. It is. It is very difficult. And like I, again, the ambiance, just like the setting and everything, because it's like a facility in like Antarctica, you know, and just so like trying to put yourself in the situation it's like you're trapped in a facility in antarctica there's nowhere to go you're surrounded by <laughs> snow and ice trapped in a building with monsters like it just it just hits differently it, it just it's resonates. just like like good luck bro <laughs> yeah yeah exactly it's like good luck have fun but yeah Co code veronica is definitely my favorite entry in the series and claire is my claire claire's my my resident evil waifu she's she's Duh. like the spunky one and uh next would be jill and then probably shiva after that mm. she was like i don't know she was like the first like um I don't know, because Resident Evil 4 was such a, or not 4, 5, was such a different experience from the rest of them. It was more of like an FPS. I felt more like I was playing like a Call of Duty. Because 4, 4 had Leon, and it was kind of, it was kind of spooky. Like, it still had like a really like creepy atmosphere to it. 5 didn't really have that. It felt like more of an action game than a, than a, uh, than like a horror game. Totally. Yeah. that's why like you know a lot of people are like yo i freaking hate resident evil 5 resident evil 6 freaking sucks and honestly i feel like both games are a lot of fun if you play it with somebody fun yeah exactly resident yeah. evil 5 was a lot of fun because you could play with other people i think i ran through six solo and i've only played through six one time and i enjoyed the updated graphics and stuff and i like that they tried to like bring a return to the high stakes, like intense moments and stuff, and like Leon gets fucked up consistently throughout the entire Leon. game. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, and that was the last one that I actually completed. Like I started seven on the VR, and that was, nice. it, was it was it was pretty terrifying just because it was hard to like maintain your equilibrium like it would in the vr it would just throw you off from time to time you're just like this is just too much i need to take this off for a little bit and never never got it around to finishing it also it was on the playstation vr and mm. that vr headset is not made very well compared to like I, the oculus i've never tried one of those on but i've always been curious the psvr um, like vr in general you haven't tried mm. Oh man, it's so much fun. If you get a chance to pick up an Oculus, I would. They are a lot of fun. But the comfort settings. So the way that VR works 
is it confuses your brain. It slows the pictures right here, super close up, but it slows down the frame rate. And that's what gives you like, it confuses your brain and makes you like, it seems like everything's really happening. So instead of watching in like 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second, it slows it down to something crazy, like 15 frames per second, but your brain just perceives it as happening like in real time. And the, it, what? yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's insane. But the PSVR has no tailoring whatsoever. You cannot change the comfort settings to uh, match. So like a lot of people, myself in particular, I can only play it for about 30 minutes before I get like very, very motion sick from it. And I've never, so I have gotten, heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. And I've never gotten motion sick from the Oculus and I can play that for hours at a time. Damn. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Me and my wife play a lot of Beat Saber and stuff in our free time off stream. It's kind of like our our act. That's how we work out. We our active, <laughs> yeah. our our switch sports. Yep, that's our, our Wii Sports. <laughs> Got to get that burn on. Da -da -da -da. Oh yeah, nice cock. <laughs> that's actually funny because sometimes I will like right right. I don't think I got to the the point in that one where like sometimes I'll pop into a friend's chat. When I when I'm like modding or something, and I'll just be like, I'm not home, but I wanted to say nice cock for real, for real. Yeah, and then yeah I'll for, just... real, for real. I'm gonna start saying that now. I'll be like, hey, I know I haven't been around, but nice cock. For real, for real. Cock. It's like a sign off. Appreciate it's like it's like love, Nico. Instead of saying love, Nico, you say for real, for real. XO XO nice cock. <laughs> I love that so much. It's so good. Oh, what a time to be alive, man. Like if 20 years ago or 15 years ago, if you were just like your friends, you're just like, hey, nice cock. They'd be like, what the fuck is what wrong What the fuck? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like now? Uh, it's a term of endearment. I mean, Australia has been saying the C word and like, uh, like the UK, they say the C word as like a term of endearment. It's not an insult. It's like, a, you're my mate. You're my friend. You know, and they say that as a term of endearment. And so yeah. I think uh that's 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 just how we get down over here. We're just like, hey, nice cock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just nice cock. You know, you gotta toss a nice cock to your fellow streamer, you know? You gotta toss a nice cock to your fellow streamer. I know it's been a while, <laughs> but nice cock, for real, for real. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are just about out of time, and this has probably been uh, the nerdiest episode to date, and I loved every single second of it. It Same. is wonderfully amazing. We could have kept on the anime train. We will. We're going to continue the anime conversation uh, in, a, in a private DM. Cause uh, I need you to turn me on to some stuff and I'm going to turn you on to some stuff uh, like Gantz. I cannot believe you haven't heard of Gantz. Uh, I'm yeah. sure you've seen the cosplays and you would understand the references. Like you see the skimpy, like leather body suits that are like missing the midsection and stuff that have like the cups all over it. I, if you saw a picture uh, from it, you would be like, I've seen then I'd probably before. recognize it. <laughs> yeah, You would absolutely recognize it. Uh, so we're going to talk more about that, but, uh, something I like to do at the end of every episode with all my guests is I like to open up the floor, um, couple ending questions. One, first of all, um, if you want to answer it, uh, when, cause you've been streaming for a while. I know you're kind of on hiatus right now. Um, if, if I can actually, sorry, stop yeah. you for a minute. I got to check on something. Sure. Real quick. Yeah. My bad. My bad. Cause okay. No, that's all good. The, the rain's I'll cut, insane. I'll, yeah, I'll cut yeah. this out. All right, for sure. <laughs> my bad. My bad. He thinks I'm going to cut it out. I'm not going to cut it out. I'm going to leave it. Every, I heard that. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep everybody entertained for a second. So YouTube, uh, I don't often get a chance to do this and, and talk directly to the YouTube viewers, but since we have a moment, I don't really like to cut stuff out of the, the VODs or not VODs out of the YouTube episodes and out of the podcast. Cause I, I like for it to be like a wholly organic experience that everybody gets to enjoy. Um, I feel like when you cut stuff out of it, you're kind of like pulling, you're pulling the realism out of it a little bit. So like, I want you guys to be able to enjoy everything as it happens. So we're going to go a little bit late today. Um, that doesn't normally happen, but it does happen in real life. People, people end up getting called away for a second. What I would like to talk to you guys about is uh, most of you guys have come here through Twitch. Um, I, you know, or friends who have shared and, and posted about 
uh, the podcast on like Twitter and, and YouTube and, or, and Facebook. I said YouTube uh, on Twitter and Facebook, uh, previous episodes and stuff like that. Uh, I want to take this opera. I keep saying uh, again. I'm, I'm, I'm off. I'm flying off the cuff here. I know how I like to end the episodes with my friends here. But now that I'm on my own, I have to I have to come up with something. Uh, I just want to say thank you. I just really no. want to say thank you all to being oh. here. Thank you guys for checking out the episodes, whether it's one of your friends that's been uh, one of the guests on here, or whether you guys are coming here from the stuff that I've posted. I just want to say thank you guys for being here. We're six episodes in. We're not stopping anytime soon. These are going to keep coming out every week. We have a lot of amazing people lined up to be on the show. And uh, it means a lot to me that you guys are checking out the episodes. You guys are watching it, enjoying. I appreciate all the comments and likes. Um, I appreciate all the new subscribers to the channel. The channel is growing, and uh, I can't wait to see where it is a year from now. I can't wait to see what happens when we hit that fi that 50 episode mark, because um, that's my goal right now. I like to set little goals for myself, and my goal right now is just to ha hit 50 episodes because I think that speaks volumes and it's incredible. Um, that I would have 50 people or at least, you know, 50 returns, people returning to each episode uh, time after time uh, until we, we release 50 episodes. So that's that's the goal. And I think for the 50th episode, we're going to do something really big and really amazing. And uh, again, just thank you guys for being here. Thanks for all the shares, likes, comments. And uh, Niku's back. Did you get it all taken care of? Yeah. Um, it's it's just the rain, but it's fine. <laughs> okay. It's just the rain. <laughs> We're, we've yeah. been talking about Resident Evil. You don't have anything like creeping around outside your house or anything, do you? I'd hope not. Yeah. You got but, some green nerves around. <laughs> so, like, I have something to kind of like, right? Those for sure, yeah. Those, those mixed herbs. <laughs> those mixed herbs. Because uh, <laughs> um, sometimes, like, I know it's not, you, you can't tell right now because it's like night. But I do have something to like kind of like block the sun, and I felt like it was going to like fly off. Because oh. of yeah. the wind and the but, rain. Yeah, but I think oh, it's wow, good. Okay. Yeah. Well, hopefully ho hopefully it holds up. I believe in your, your engineering methods. I think it'll it'll stand the test. Go throw some more nails in it or something to keep it keep right? it from falling down. I would like MacGyver <laughs> it. <laughs> but yeah, right. sorry, sorry to yeah. No, it's it's okay. It's okay. So uh, back into uh, Mr. Niku Senpai. I know you've been on kind of a hiatus from streaming recently. Do you have uh, plans to come back to it? Do you have any goals that you're working on? Do you have any projects that are coming up in the future? Um, yeah, I, I actually do want to find the time to stream, I guess, kind of-ish how I used to. I know I can't right now because of work. Right. But, um, yeah, you know, I really do miss streaming i really do miss you know just hanging out um bullshitting with people i feel like that's probably my favorite part of streaming right. just being able to chit chat and yeah um so yeah i have been missing it i have tried to do a stream here and there but with the holidays and prepping for the holidays right um, it's it's been rough to try to get a stream in and you know sometimes i, I don't know if it happens to you too you'll be like i'm about to go live but wait this person just went live and I haven't seen them in a while. Yeah. All the time. I mean, not even that. Just It could be, it could be anything. It could be like, Oh, I'm, I'm about to go live. And then like something happens with the family or something. And I'm like, Oh, well, there goes that, you know, I got to go. My wife is sick. I got to go take care of my wife, you know? And For like, sure. so, uh, I think, and not even just having a family, but like anybody, man, streaming is like, cause it's not required, you know, it's not, it's not set in stone. It's not something you have to do. It's not like a real job where like if you don't show up and clock in, you could potentially not have a job anymore. So like very often uh, other aspects of life come up and kind of keep you from being able to do it. It's a very hard thing to do consistently. Um, and especially like when you're you, like your work situation and you're just you have these one off opportunities where like, hey, I might be able to stream right now. And then something pops up or like you said, somebody you haven't seen in a while goes live and you want to pop into their stream and hang out with them. Like, I totally get that. Do you have any uh, games like that you're looking forward to playing when you are able to return? Yeah, because I. Yakuza, okay. I could have guessed what? that. <laughs> Are you playing yeah. any games in the interim, like when you have to, like not streaming, but just when getting your your weekly gaming in? No, honestly, ever since uh, I started streaming, I kind of just started to say, you know what, if I'm gonna play it, might as well stream it. 
Right. So I haven't really been like, yeah, let me play this game. But I'm just so awful when it comes down to, let's say, hey, tonight I'm going to watch this anime. And I'll say that, but then I won't watch it till like two months later. <laughs> yep. Yep. We, dude, yeah. we have a long backlog of animes and TV shows and stuff. Every time we actually, between TikTok and Discord, uh, my <laughs> wife and I have an ever growing list of stuff that we see like clips and stuff for that we're like, oh, we want to watch this. And then it's like, we'll sit down to watch something. We're like, well, what, well, what do we want to watch? And it's like, uh, I don't know. We have so much stuff we could pick. Well, what about this random show that we've never heard of before? Okay, cool. Let's watch that. You know, and then we never go back to the list to see like what we For have. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like that happened to me with Chainsaw Man. I started it and it's been so great. I just don't know why I never went back to it. Right. Like I, I'm go I'm planning on going back to it, but it's just it's it hasn't happened for whatever reason. Niku, I think you might have ADHD. Is that what that is? I mean, I I kind of feel like that. I feel like most of us have ADHD. I I'm sorry. We're gonna derail for a second. I think because <laughs> I have a conspiracy theory. I have a conspiracy theory about this. I think that just everything moves so fast in modern times. Everything from TV shows and movies, from just life, moves so fast in today's society that it's hard um, to like stay consistent on anything. And I think a lot of people have developed ADHD from it because like I go back and try to watch movies from like the eighties and nineties and I'm like, God, this is moving so slow. Like I can't, <laughs> I can't focus on this. Cause like, I just need something to happen. And like, there's these like long drawn out pauses and like overtones. And we're so used to like the frames changing every two seconds, like watch any Marvel movie from now like any of the MCU movies, like it's just constantly the frames are changing and there's a different picture every like second and a half. And it's, it's, and I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. Cause I love having that fast paced, like I want that. And I want more of that. Yeah. yeah. But like, I think it's ruined like older movies and stuff. I can't watch like cinematic masterpiece from like the eighties and nineties. Have you ever tried to watch the Godfather? Not recently <laughs> okay well i i can't i physically cannot watch the godfather because it is so fucking slow it drives me insane and it's like a, one of the it's a cinematic masterpiece like it it's highly acclaimed it's probably one of the best movies of all time and like i cannot i physically cannot force myself to watch this movie because i can't sit there and enjoy it because it's not fast enough it's not moving fast enough and like, yeah i ugh, it's crazy so I think you might be right because for some reason I feel like I guess maybe uh, how would I explain this like I feel like I don't understand how people have so much time in the day to do so many things right and I'm all like how does that happen like if I have work the next day I'm just gonna want to go home probably have a few drinks fall asleep wake up go work and right. then some people are like no you know I'm gonna uh I'm going to clean the, the house. I'm going to do the everything. dishes. I'm going to write in a piece of my novel. I'm going to watch three episodes of this show. I'm, I'm going to yeah, like yeah. spend time with my dog. Like, I, yeah, I get it. I get it. I totally get it. I don't, I don't know how people <laughs> do that. Uh, just really good scheduling and they just stick, they just stick to their, they stick to their guns and I, they, they kind of force themselves to do that. I've, uh, so here's a, a trade secret or at least not a trade secret, but a really brilliant idea that my wife saw on a TikTok and we've started using for ourselves and it's helped us be a lot more organized. You can create a Discord server for yourself. Kind of like a... Like, like a private Discord. List? Yeah, well, no, like for anything, create a private Discord server for yourself that you're the only person in the Discord server. You can create different channels for different aspects of your life. So for me, that's how I keep track of the podcast and my my uh, collaborations. That's how I keep track of my schedule and everybody that I have lined up. Um, I have another channel in there for like stream ideas, like stuff I want to update on the stream and stuff. Um, she has stuff like she has a channel in there for like weird band names that we come up with. Or like anytime <laughs> someone's like, that'd be a great band name. She just keeps a list of those. Uh, but we also have like 
like our like our family plans we have one for like our family plans and stuff we want to do we have another one for like stuff we want to do to the house like redecorating and like stuff for the house renovations and stuff uh man it makes it makes a big difference because it's all right there they're all in different channels anytime an idea or something sparks up you can post it in there no it's dude it's made a huge difference in like just how we get stuff done and, and like it's improved the quality of our life a lot. Like it helps me focus and like stay up to date and, and hold myself accountable to the stuff I want to do. So that definitely can actually get it done. Okay. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll have to give that a try. Yeah, I was going to say one thing though. Can you add garlic Mahjong to the band name? Uh, yes, yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> Garlic Mahjong. Hold on, I, I gotta type it out real quick. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna text it to my wife. No context. G- Garlic, Garlic Mahjong. Mahjong. Band name. Done. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> it's on there. It's on there, dude. It's Thank so you. good. <laughs> I love that so much. Garlic Mahjong. That sounds like a Dragon Ball Z character. Garlic Mahjong. Majin, <laughs> Majin garlic. Majin garlic. Majin, Majin garlic. <laughs> Dude, it's so good. Garlic Majin. Oh, man. All right. So uh, we did projects and stuff. Okay. So I'm going to cough. <coughs> cough glad I announced, I'm glad I announced that first. Um, <laughs> so the one last super important thing we need to do before we end the podcast is – uh, we need, we need, we need a message. I like to open up the floor and give my guests an opportunity to spread a message, whatever message you want out into the world. Um, sometimes it might have something to do with like mental health awareness. Um, sometimes it might have to do with like, like a political or like environmental stuff. Um, it doesn't have to be like super serious if you don't like, you don't have to make it super serious, but just imagine that, uh, you are in front of a million people and you, you have the platform, you, you get to say whatever you want to the million people that are watching. And this is your one shot to do it. What would you say? Mommy milkers. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Mommy milkers. That's the best one yet. <laughs> that is the best one yet. I love it. Just just imagining all those people and just like behind a microphone. Mommy milkers. Yep. Uh, the crowd would go absolutely yeah. ape shit. They would love it. They would eat it up and they'd be like, hell yeah, mommy milkers. I mean, that's most of what TikTok is anyway, right? Right. <laughs> um, that is absolutely beautiful. On, well, on, I guess a serious note, though. Yeah. Um, you have a serious one, too? Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Like, for sure, give yourselves that... Uh, that break that you need sometimes it could be a taking a break from twitch uh whether it be streaming or watching um you don't realize how much time goes into something until later um so give yourselves a breather and understand that other people also need to take a breather from time to time and just be supportive towards each other and yeah just you know we're we're all on this rock together <laughs> trying yeah. to make it be as uh, smooth a time as possible so yeah that is yeah, that's you know? beautiful that's beautiful i love it Thank both you. of them golden golden be, both yeah. of them gold. make sure you both give yourself mommy time milkers. and mommy milkers <laughs> <laughs> you guys heard oh, yeah. it here from mr niku senpai uh make sure you all go to that go to that link twitch.tv slash niku senpai follow niku he is also on the socials he is usually posting some pretty banger tweets uh even though he's on hiatus right now um he's always got some words of wisdom like mommy milkers (laughs) and uh he is an amazing dude thank you again for being here and being a part of this uh it was an absolute pleasure i had a, a wonderful time from start to finish we had we shared some laughs we shared some tears we shared some mommy milkers 
it some was, orgies it some angry like, orgies some angry orgies you're the first person to ever put me on hold during the podcast. <laughs> my bad, my bad. No, no, it's awesome. It's awesome. I get it put I need that cuz like I talked about during that little break that like I I don't ever take the time to actually like talk one-on-one -on -one with the YouTube community that's watching and so like I needed that I, I needed that challenge for a second and like I started I started rough but I think I brought it back around and I need to be prepared for those moments because like I don't want to cut anything out of it right I want raw. this to be Just... yeah I want this to be an organic experience and like one it's going to make me a better creator because I'm going to be ready for those moments and I'm going to have those experiences and two like I don't a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of YouTubers don't have that same aesthetic as twitch streamers because when you're a twitch streamer it's all live happening right there you don't have the option to retake or reshoot or uh cut stuff out of there it's all live it's all raw and like i want to bring that feeling to youtube you know i want that like this is happening live right now we're not going to cut anything out of it you're not going to get like the the pretty sliced up you know product in the package <laughs> You're gonna get you're gonna get the real shit, you know. And so I love that. I love it. It's real. It's human, and it's down to earth. And uh, yeah, that's it. So again, yeah. thank you for being here, Niku. I love you to death, man. You're awesome. I cannot wait to do more of this in the future. I can't wait to talk more anime with you. I can't wait to play more video games with you. Uh, I can't even remember how we met, but it is a absolute pleasure. And uh, I'm glad that we're sitting here tonight doing this. So thank uh, you for being uh here. I'm going to say it was probably like the Mario Maker 2 community. Somehow we like just meshed up. Yeah. That's I, usually I how it exactly is. How, how it is, right? Yeah. I grill um, but, people sometimes. I'll ask them. I'll be like, how, what's your earliest? Cause like, I won't remember. I have the memory of a goldfish. I'll be like, how, what, how did we meet? And, you know? And I'll be like, okay, you tell me, you know? And so, yeah, I think we probably met somewhere, maybe through Dan, maybe like I met you through Dan, one of Dan's streams. Yeah, because there are a lot of, um, for sure, great streamers that I feel like we see each other in chats. And sometimes, yeah. you know, one will raid with another and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, dude, honestly, thank you again for having me. Um, when you first told me about it, I was like, I'm honored, you know, to be considered, you know, for, yeah. for the podcast. So it really does mean a lot. And you're right. It's super cool to have things be organic. You know, this, this podcast became organic mommy milkers the best time <laughs> so we're doing great and um yeah you know whatever you know you're up for in the future let me know i'll try to put it in my private discord like like you mentioned yeah and, dude uh, i'm telling you try it's, it's gonna change your life it'll change your life you're gonna be so much more organized and you're gonna be like how did i ever live without this before it's, <laughs> it's, wonderful. it's so amazing because it's free and it's private and nobody can ever join it. So there's like no security issues or anything. So like, it's mm -hmm. totally, it's legit. It's awesome. For sure. All right. Thank you again, Opto. Have yourself a great night. Um, everyone again, take care of yourselves. It's a, it's, it gets a bit bumpy, you know, sometimes, but make the most of everything while you have everything and yeah. Enjoy the things you don't have sometimes more than the things, you know, That'll probably cause misfortune. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. Until wait, you know, I usually announce who the next uh guest is gonna be. Hold on. Let me announce it real quick. Dun dun dun. I should use I should be more prepared. I always do this at the end of every episode. I'm like, oh wait, let me introduce my next guest. So Private my next Discord guest. <laughs> yep, I'm pulling it up right now. <laughs> Get my collab schedule right here. There's Niku. And so next is going to be Amethyst Art, all the way from the Philippines. She, uh, I actually met her. She started doing some, uh, like some, she found my channel or something or found me through Facebook. Actually, I think it was Facebook. And she sent me some fan art of my channel. And we've been friends with her ever since. And we've been with her through the birth of her child and her growth as her, as a VTuber and stuff. And I absolutely love it. So I'm excited to have her on next episode. Until then, I love you guys. Go follow Niku Senpai and Mommy Milkers. Good night, everybody. <laughs>